Right then peeps, back with another video. It seems like forever since I've sat down and done one and today something I've been looking forward to for a good while. It's the NHD 15. So as bizarre as it sounds, I only just got the review of the uh D14 up uh yesterday or the day before, depending on when this video goes live. Um I won't spend too much time talking about it. I'm gonna get the unboxing side of things done and we'll just chat as we go so um first thing to mention is the packaging compared to the old d14 which i have here somewhere which looked a little something like that it's been on the market for years so it, it doesn't quite have that classy premium noxious sort of look about it and we'll just put them side by side so you can get a bit of a feel. I will be doing some side by side comparisons of the actual cooler so we'll just get that out of the way. But um, yeah this is much more like the more recent U14, uh, U12S. I really really like the, the Nox Noxua packaging so I'll just bring that in a touch. Um, we'll just work our way through them. This is actually cool just not to start that's sort of embossed and raised. Um, anyway, it's the NHD 15 D type premium cooler based on the NHD 14, of course. Um, we'll just blast through the specs and then we'll get to it. So it's a six, it's a what? It's a six heat pipe dual tower at design, the widened fin stack and expanded heat pipe layout, high RAM compatibility in single fan mode, which I will come to in detail. Uh, Included our dual NF A15 fans, which are really funky. Again, we'll touch more on them as we get there. But basically, a 15 centimeter frame on one side. Actually, I'm just going to get sidetracked, so we'll come back to that. Um, as always, you've got the PW web support to learn how to adapt us. Uh, excellent component coolant, secure firm to mountain system, which is epic. And uh, compatibility with past and future sockets. And by that, not sure what are well known to provide upgrade kits and you know really good solutions to get their products working on new platforms. So on this side I'll um I'll just blast through the main specs. It's coming in at 165 millimeters high, which is a little bit taller than the D40. It's 115 150 sorry wide. Uh, again a little bit wider. So I will get back to this side by side thing, you know, it will not spend too much time on this, but the one thing I do want to zoom in on is compatibility. No longer out of the box can this work with Socket 775, which to be honest, it's a long overdue. I, I know there are still systems uh, rocking a 775, but are you going to need something like this? Unlikely, because it's already you know, so many solutions out there. If you've got a 775 system, you're not going to be coming to a D15. That said, Noxua be Noxua. If you get in contact with them, I'll, I'll leave the link in the description. It'll, it'll be explained in more detail in the written review. But basically, it will provide you with a, an alternative kit if you wanted to do so. Basically, you're, you're going to need some information, some documentation, but that, that'll be in the, uh, the description or an annotation or whatever. Um, that is also for socket 1366. It's the same deal. Out of the box, it's no good, but you can if you want to. Uh, the fans, I'm not going to spend any time talking about them again. We're just, we're going to get them out. I've already reviewed them. Um, technical drones, uh, nothing too significant on that side. On the back, uh, I've just got to zone in on the ones that matter. I will put an overlay image so you can see this as I go through it. But basically, as you'd imagine, it's based on the D14. It's a six heat pipe dual tower design. Uh, it's got the wide and thin stacks, yada yada yada. Uh, RAM compatibility, let's touch on this one. So, the D14 was notorious for being a bit of a pain in the arse when it came to RAM compatibility. Uh, especially with sort of X79. Um, 
it was really hit and miss. And, uh, you know, not sure, not sure I went out of the way to provide all the compatibility charts and, you know, but there just wasn't much they could do. You know, things changed after the cooler came along. Um, this crazy friends of having ran with heat sinks that are like four meters high and all that bullshit. So, um, not sure I weren't able to do much. And, uh, you know, other companies sort of zoned in and took advantage of this and started to offer coolers with better support. Uh, it was tackled really well in the NHU-14S, offering uh, a really bold statement of 100% compatibility. To get that RAM compatibility, not only are there some notches cut out where the RAM is, but um, to cover the RAM, so to speak, not sure I say, if you're using the centre fan only, then you're not going to have any sort of problems, which is you know, a logical way to do it. Um, but basically, yeah, you're good to go with RAM up to 32 mils. Um, I'll test them, we'll delve and try and see if that statement is true and what to work around with the D14. I just found a really easy fix of just lifting the, hook, the front fan up a touch. I don't imagine that's really going to be an option here, but we will get to it. Again, dual fans, PWM, um, secure mem fountain system. Again, I've touched on it many times in past reviews. It's just a really simple but epic solid mountain system. It's dead easy to do. Again, the mention of past and future sockets. Uh, as always, you've got the NTH1 thermal compound, which is brilliant. Uh, on its own, it is a little sort of pricey compared to the rest, so getting a free is nice. As as usual in natural fashion, a bonkers six year warranty. I mean, what's really going to go wrong with a heatsink anyway? It's going to be the fans, but um, six years. I mean, who does that? So, on the final side, I don't speak every language in the world, so I will be reading English, of course. And uh, what you're looking at is built on the basis of the legendary NHD 14, carrying on its quest for the ultimate quiet and cooling performance, not just flagship model. The D15 is an elite class dual tower uh, cooler for the highest demands. Pardon me. Um, it's expanded heat pipe layout and two premium grade fans. Support automatic speed control to further improve the D14's award-winning efficiency. Topped off with the trusted, I just feel like I'm really repeating myself. So what we're going to do is just look in the down box. Um, extremely geeky, nerdy, stupid, but I must mention it. When it comes to natural packaging, I just don't see this anywhere else. Um, and as we do the unboxing, you'll see exactly what I mean. You just don't see this anywhere else, you know, it, it's um, a little bit geeky or whatever. But when it comes to removing products from uh, packages, some of them are just such a pain in the arse. They really are. And not sure I'll just go the extra mile. Um, as we progress, we'll see exactly what I mean. So, everything's sort of packed to the broom. Uh, first thing we've got is accessory kit, which I've seen these a thousand times. It is a free screwdriver the NTH1 compound, fan brackets, a Y splitter cable and a lower noise adapter. And you've got the individual mount systems for AMD and Intel. I won't be touching AMD but I can say that they couldn't be any easier. There's no backplate, uh, there's no fiddling. It's extremely easy. Um, unfortunately I just can't cover it. I don't have a Intel, uh, sorry, an AMD test system. Yeah, it's something I might look at in the future. Um, again, I'll just quickly touch on the mount. Uh, it's basically a back plate, two arms, washers. You do get the additional bolts for 2011. Again, we'll, we'll come back to those. But this is what I mean. You just got this little cut out. So you're not reaching and trying to sort of get in there. Let's slide that out. And then you've got the heat sink here. And I believe this is probably an extra fan. We'll see. Let's we'll try and get those out. It definitely doesn't seem as vast as I expected to be honest, with, with the packaging being bigger anyway. Um, so we'll 
come back to that in a sec. I'll just check to see what I think it is. And it's a, an extra ear 15 fan. Uh, you can obviously use this in single fan mode or push pull sort of setup we will be looking at both. So let's get this out of the way. Nothing in the bottom of the box. So I will just try and fathom out how to open it. Um, I've got multiple sort of openings. Do the bottom first. You just see the base of the cooler in there. And there's probably another one somewhere else. It's here. This is what I mean about the Noxtra stuff. The way it just falls out, you're not tearing and fucking around all the time. So get that out of the way. Here yeah, is the cooler. I've got the protective plastic insert on the bottom. I'm just going to leave that on while we're turning the cooler around and such. Um, just get this out of the way. So the first thing my eyes are drawn to straight away is this little gap. I'm quite surprised by this. Um, just looking back at the, the day 14 when the center fan went down, I think it was the NFP14 or something like that, but it, it was a bit of a sort of tight fit. It was really in there. It was pulling and pushing and then you had the front 120 mil fan on. So that is quite unusual. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. It definitely forces the design to be a little bit wider. Of course, these are the cutouts for memory. Um, you know, to take those out, that's obviously going to have an impact on cooling performance. So, not sure I would have been a little bit creative on how to make up for that sort of lost uh, material there. Um, we'll just spin this way and look down on it. I was only working with the D14 yesterday, so it's fresh in my mind, and I remember that fucking thing had all these cuts. And grooves, and every time I moved the damn thing, it was uh, cut my hands, which was a real pain. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bring the D14 now, so I'm just sort of emphasise that point because it was a real pain. So this is the D14 here. That's what I mean. It's these cuts. Every time I was grabbing the damn thing, it was uh, leaving indents. You can probably see them pain on the light in my hands. So we're just going to stick them side by side quickly. So I mentioned briefly on the, the tour of the box about the, the differences in height and width and stuff and there's not really much in it. You, you can see the, the extra height on the D15 but the most obvious thing is the density of the fins. Um, the D14 has got these rounded edge or this aggressive sort of spiky fin whereas the D15 everything's just a bit more refined and smooth. You just coming back to these, you, know, you, you can just sort of grasp how much material's been cut away to offer that extra bit of room. So we'll just do a top and top look again. Now you've got your 60 pipes per side, that hasn't changed. However, the top and bottoms on the D15 are slightly recessed. And we'll just have a look at the bases. So really looking at it, doesn't I'll just take that off. It doesn't look like there's anything massively different in terms of design on the underside. But when you're looking up at it, you can just get that point again. Everything was a bit more curved and you know different on the D14. Everything seems that much more compact when it comes to fins on the D15 um, and as I'm talking about now it's become an increasingly obvious where I've seen this sort of pattern before and it's the U14 so I'm just going to bring that into shot so we can sort of grasp what I'm getting at this is the U14S which I looked at a little while ago um, in terms of from the D14 to the U14 to the D15 you know, the similarities are almost like a blend of the old D14 mixed with the, 
the new U14S and you slap it all together, gives you a D15. Obviously, you've got the, the dual tower design. Initially, apart from the, the heat pipes, it's almost like you've got two U14s strapped together um, to make the D15. There's a lot of similarities between the two. Um, just to briefly mention, this cooler did very well for it being a, a single tower cooler. So we're just going to unhook the fans. The fan, should I say. There is two included. And I was going to say that these could be an easier because I'm doing it on the fan and packing around and making it a little difficult. But yeah, these fans, when I first seen the press release for them a good while ago, I was really sort of, well, what's all this about and baffled. But when I got them and I tested them, absolutely fell in love with them. The holes are actually 12 centimetre holes. You've got a 15 centimetre width in this direction and a 14 in that direction. So it just gives you that, just that little bit extra when it comes to how much air you're able to get, especially sort of going under towards the main heat pipes. Uh, we just found it really helped. So we're really impressed with those. Um, we already know from past testing on the U14S that a single fan did really well. So we'll obviously be doing a, a push-pull setup. Um, there's not really a great deal more I can say about the cooler. Um, it is a little bit heavier than the D40. I think off the top of my head, it's something like 60 to 100 grams or a confirmation by an annotation. Um, and that's always a concern about, oh, I don't want this crazy big ass heat sink on my motherboard. It's going to warp this, that. And, um, the secure, the secure firm mounting system does such a great job of spreading the weight out. Um, I've never personally had an issue. Um, so, you know, I can't say for certain there'll be no issues with uh, warping and that sort of thing, but I haven't personally seen it, um, and I don't have any concerns from this. I do um, run an open-air test system, so everything's sitting uh, horizontally for me now, so I'm less concerned than I ever would have been. Um, so, yes, I'm rambling. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly show you the mount briefly. Uh, I'll get the test bench in, and we'll get to fitting. So, it really couldn't be any easier. have got separate manuals for the LG 115X, that'll be 1115, 1156, 1150, single manual for that. Additional for the 2011, you're basically just going to use different bolts, but um, really, really simple instructions. I do like this for not sure they don't sort of bombard you with wave links and buy this, and here's a product catalogue, and you know, a million different languages. Um, without the words, the pictures are clear enough. That's the point I'm trying to get to. Um, something you do need to keep in mind because of its size is orientation. And I'm hoping the cam's getting it okay. Um, when it comes to fitting the mountain arms, you can either fit them vertically or horizontally. And that's, you know, that's going to affect how your cooler is and whether it's going from top to bottom or uh, left to right, the more traditional route. You might have heat sinks, graphics cards, just, you know, things in the way. So you, you might not actually have the choice that may be chosen for you. We'll examine that on, uh, my test system, which is Z87. It's an MSI board. You know, it's got the, the big dragon heat sinks on the, the left and the top. We'll see if there's any issues with that. Um, so what you basically get is the two mountain arms. Which, as I said, you can either fit them that way or sort of that way, and that will affect the orientation. Uh, back plate, and unlike some of the other back plates, you, you know, you, these are already in there. It's just straight through. Um, you've got four rubber washers that sit on the top once it's through the motherboard, and then just depending on whether you're 2011 or 115X, it's just a case of tightening up bolts. So what I'll do is I'll bring in the test bench, we'll, we'll get to fitting this. Okay, I've already fitted the back plate, you can see the mounts coming through at the four points. The next 
step is to take these sort of solid rubber blocks just sit them over the four planks and when it comes to the mountain arms you really need to give this step a little bit of thought do you want them horizontal <laughs> horizontal or vertical um, it's going to affect the orientation of the cooler you might need to you know just find what works best for you for where your GPU is, your memory, that sort of thing. Um, I'm just going to go for a traditional install. Um, you've got the, the three sort of cutouts here, and each is dependent and relevant sort of to a different socket type. It's the middle hole for socket 1150. And you just take the fasteners. I'm just going to do them quickly by hand just to get them in there, and then we'll tighten them up. And obviously the Next thing you need to do would be thermal compound. I'm not even going to touch that with a barge pull. Just do it the way you want. <laughs> what if it works for you? Because it seems there is no right or wrong way. I am not even going to get into that. So just tighten those up. Don't go out your way to try and over tighten them. Really, no need. So, I'm just going to drop the cooler in now. You want to try and catch the spring loaded mounts directly into these little pins here. And just try and lay them up the best you can. That's just going to avoid your thermal compounds sliding all over. Well, hopefully, I can catch these the first time. And once it nips into place, again, it's a pressurized mounting system, but don't try and overdo it. Just turn it until they feel like they don't want to turn no more. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this extra little bit of space in the center, it certainly wasn't a pain with the D14, you know, it was doable, but you were restricted. You didn't have as much room. It's just that little bit uh, easier on the D15. So the next thing you need to do is just drop the fans in. Um, and they just literally just drop into place. There's no right or wrong sort of height. You just want to try and get it equal, best you can. Um, in terms of wiring, if you're going to run a dual, you want to run these off to a Y splitter and then a, a single four pin, ideally. So I'll just grab the other fan, just spin it around a touch so we can uh, get this one fitted in too. So this is the one that is still sealed from earlier. The brackets to fit it are actually included in the additional box with your uh, screwdriver and your thermal paste. So I'll just go ahead and fit these uh, clips off cam. They're dead easy to do. While I'm doing that, I just want to tap in on something that's probably going to be a sort of query for some, and that is a third fan. Uh, according to what I've heard from Noxua, the gains are so minimal, it's, uh, it's not really a viable choice. You could definitely go out your way and try and make it work or whatever but you know there's just uh, the gains are so small I just I really wouldn't bother okay so I've got the clips fitted to the front fan now based on what Noxio has already said 32 mil maximum um, you know that hasn't been clear to me now does that just mean to fit under the first cutout or is that for the fan uh, and we're about to find out so that is the fan sitting just on top of the modules there now and you can see how much higher it is so in terms of compatibility you know there's definitely still issues there the fix in this case is probably going to be obviously using smaller memory modules I can move the first stick of uh, HyperX Beast 2 dim slot 1 and then it won't 
even be a factor with the fan, but the rest are going to be an issue for sure. Let's just take them out and try a different way. I'll just take the cam off the tripod and we'll have a bit of a, a closer look at the situation. I'll bring the fan back in just so you can uh, get a bit of a feel of the problem. You can see roughly that's where the fan should be sitting. And our modules are just them, you know, a couple of mils too high. Something a little bit of sm you know, a bit smaller would have been fine under there, but as is, just a no go. So somewhat disappointing. Um, you know, off the top of my head, the most logical fix here would have been to stick with what Noxua did with the NHC 14, and that is to use a 120 mil fan on the front. Um, and obviously you wouldn't have the same performance, but you could offer more compatibility for RAM. Um, so as is, you know, it, it's not really worth complaining about because not sure I'm telling you right off the bat on that product package, your max is 32 and it is. Um, it's just a bit of a shame really after all these years that there wasn't something a bit more sort of in between to suit both parties. Um, you know, something that would be better for them manufacturing wise and something that'd be more suitable for us as consumers uh, when it comes to choice. So I'll, I'll just grab another uh, stick of RAM that is low profile just to put it in there so you can see. So I've just got a random old Mushkin module here which uh, you know it's got very small heat spreader. It only comes up uh, I don't know, about five or six mils above standard so I'm just going to put that in side by side with the beast so you can see the difference and then hopefully we can get this fan to fit so again I'll just bring the cam down and you can see it is considerably lower so we'll just pull out the beast attempt to fit the fan again Now see now to be perfectly honest it's still a little bit close for comfort in my opinion. It's sat there right on the modules. I can't fit it there for sure. Um but it's just not what I had hoped. No, it could have been better. I'm still about two millimeters higher than the middle fan and I'm scraping the top of a very low profile memory module so yes it's uh it's quite disappointing. Go ahead and just put that on for the sake of it. So yeah, it's not what I had hoped for. You can see how much higher that front fan is. So it just dawned on us really, maybe there is quite an obvious fix here. And that's to sort of utilise this space at the back here by um, reversing the fan clips from the default, which is sort of this way with the clips back and try to fit them at the front. If I reverse these clips so we can get a fan around the back, that might have uh, you know just been an option. So I've gone gone ahead and done that. I fit the clips in reverse and we could bring it in and try and clip it on the back. And the most obvious issue there is you you've basically got a push pull fan set up on this tower. Um and this is essentially going to be getting the extra flow and you're not really going to have anything on here. So what I was thinking is I could fit the fan here and for the center fan do the same deal. Take these clips, reverse it, 
and then I can move this along closer to the first tower so it's you know it's pulling you know there's probably going to be a marginal difference between that gap so what I'm going to do off cam is I'm, I'm going to do some thermal testing with this fan moved so it's pulling directly and then I'm going to have another fan around the back pulling like that and then I'll, I'll put this one back as is and just sort of compare the two you know really there's probably going to be half a degree or a degree or maybe even nothing in it so yeah that's what I'm thinking obviously something to note is heat sinks in this area um, I've, I've mentioned before the the MSI board hasn't really got that big of a heat sink um, I think this is going to be fine in terms of fitting so we'll just go ahead before I get sort of too wrapped up in this idea and just see if there's any issues and things are looking pretty promising so yeah you can see that's fitted on there absolutely no problem whatsoever I'll just turn it so you can get a bit of a grasp of what I'm getting at um, it may not be an option for you know everyone but in this particular setup this is probably going to be the, the best way to do it um, you're definitely going to have conflicts if you really really want a rear fan but you know this is going to be doing such a job anyway it's going to be exhausting straight out the rear of the case anyway so yeah that's the the option I'm going to go with um, I will be testing um, you know the default way of having a fan here and center just by using uh, the beast in dim, dim slot one and two there's probably going to be little or nothing in it so off cam I'm going to do some various tests um, the sort of single fan out of the box um, I'm going to move the ram under and have it at the front and center and then I will do this sort of final test about what's the best option here we'll moving this center fan directly over to the first tower have any impact and that will all be in the written review you know there's going to be too much to to get in the video so just so I'd, uh, I'd mention that this is probably the best option so I'm just going to go ahead and power up the unit with both fans and just try and give you a bit of a feel of the uh, the noise levels that sort of thing with them both running That's the hard drive at the moment. I'm I'm not on my SSD. I've been doing some testing, so we'll just wait for that to settle down. So really, when it comes to noise level, obviously this is an open airframe case. You're going to have to factor in and use your imagination somewhat. That you know, it's going to be even quieter still. In a, in a sealed case but um, you know I've worked with the NF-15s before and they're absolutely you know, they're phenomenal little fans the increase in noise level between running at their uh, lower levels um, right up to when things get a little bit toasty it's just so small the difference you know if anything it's um, you know like a really light wine, a really really gentle hum. So the great fans, yeah. Okay, I thought I'd just put in this extra segment of video. Essentially, what we've got is the system is sitting on the desktop right now, doing nothing. Um, the fans are sitting at very low RPMs. It's extremely quiet. And what I'm going to do is fire up OCCT, try and get the CPU to work extra hard, get these fans to increase, just so you can hear the difference between idle. And when things get a bit toasty so i'm going to let it sit quiet for about five seconds then i'll load up OCCT, and hopefully you can hear the the small change in the tone okay that's OCCT open it's just reaching the max I'm hoping that the cam's picking it up. There's a really, really light sort of humming, whining sound 
it's not distracting, it's not a nuisance, but it is there. You know, it's it's just the motor spinning. That difference between idle and load is just bonk as good. So good. I'm just going to leave that bit there. I thought that would just be a little bit useful just to give you guys a bit of a feel of the sound levels. So there's not much more I can do with a video. Um, obviously I'll be doing the the detail testing off cam, wrapping all those results up into the charts, comparing them to the D14 directly, the U14S, and the other coolers in the database. So I hope the video has been of some use to you, you know, to make a judgment whether this is a viable upgrade from the D14 or whether I, uh, you know, considering picking something like this up. Um, at the time of recording, availability is quite low in the UK. I know Overclockers UK have got a few in stock, um, and that was about 77.99 mark, which yes, is not cheap, and you're definitely stepping into all in one water cooler territory but you know you're gonna have to head off and check out the results I have no idea at this point how it's even gonna fare right then yes not sure I said don't use free fans could I help myself no of course these results will be included in the full review click away see if it made any difference that's going to do it for today. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you've enjoyed it, hit the like button. It helps us greatly. A uh, sub would be appreciated, but that's your choice, as always. And I will catch you in the next one.